Okay, here's a video to show you what you need to do to put one of the meters we make on your Hickok tube tester and why you have to make the alteration. Because Hickok, for some reason, compared to every other American made meter, Simpson, Weston, API, Triplet, AM, LFEs, the difference is Hickok put their movement. This is one of the bigger Hickok meters, which is in a, it's just a four and a, half, four and a half by four inch meter in a bigger case. What they did is they put their movement down a little bit lower as compared to this Weston. Weston's the same as the Simpson, Triplet, API, LFE, all the rest of them. That's why you have to cut a little bit off your tester. Um, now here is a four and a half inch by four inch meter of Hickox from a 6000. 6000A and same bolt pattern as the Weston, Simpson, all the rest of them except you see where the movement is, you see the very small amount before the edge of the, the black there as compared to here. So you would take a template and put it on your tube tester like this and this is what you need to cut out. What you see in the gold there is what you would need to cut out. And then you would need to put two new holes in there at the bottom holes for your meter. And that the new meter will cover up all the original holes. They're up higher. And you use the, the original two holes on the tube tester. So it's a very small amount that I cut out with a Dremel type of a tool. It's not actually a Dremel. It's more of an industrial type tool. And... I also recommend when you put the line there, you cut above the line because if you don't, I made a video where I made the hole a little bit too small and I had to do a lot of filing because I get the, I like to get the meter to fit in there nice and tight, not with a lot of extra space. So in, in this particular case, I have a person asking me about a meter he has on his 6000. It's just like this meter right here. It's the newer version, four and a half by four inch meter. And once you cut that hole out, you don't even have to drill new holes for the bottom holes on this particular meter because it'll fit right in those two holes there. But you just need room to bump that movement up a little bit so it'll drop into those holes. Now, if your meter was like this on your tube tester, one of the older style meters, which is a little bit bigger than four and a half by four, uses this relatively the same bolt pattern. You can see the difference. These are up a little bit higher than these ones. So that's why you have to put two new holes for there. And I cut this template out to the exact same size as the meter. So you can see there's still space from the buttons and it covers all the holes. And if you wouldn't put your old meter back in or say you got a, a tester and you want to keep it all original and you want to put the old meter back in or get a old meter that's still good, you can just drop the old meter right back in there and it would still cover all the holes. So this is what you need to cut out. And in the case of this newer style meter, you wouldn't even have to drill two new holes for the bottom holes. You just need to move this up so it drops right in using all four of the original stud holes there. So that's it. And that is why you have to make an alteration. I don't know why Hickok made their movements down lower like that. I don't know if they did it on purpose, so you'd have to buy a meter from them. But since Hickok isn't selling these meters anymore, um, this, is a, this is a good alternative. Not only is it a good alternative, these meters are going to be far superior. They're, they're much newer than the Hickok meters. Most of these are 60 years old at least. Uh, the meters I use are new old stock meters. I have some that are more expensive than others and I can sell the cheaper ones cheaper. They're just as good as the, the more expensive ones. They work just as well. But I can sell them cheaper because I buy them cheaper. And most of them have plastic cases rather than the glass. And also this, this, uh, this bar they put on here. Really you can't use that to help you set the line. What that is for if you're Let's say you test your meter and it's supposed to be 100 UA and it's coming up at uh, 98 UA full scale. You can, if, this, if this is still magnetized, a lot of times these aren't even still magnetized and are doing nothing. 
If it's still magnetized, you can adjust this around to pull the needle over at the end of the scale so you can make it 100 UA full scale. Was I saying UA? I don't know. But anyways, that's it. And most of the meters I make are going to be right perfectly to spec. And some of them I'll put the the uh, the rheostat or the resistor, adjustable resistor on the outside of the meter like on the 6000 if there's a big adjustment to be made. And a lot of them you don't have to do anything. It'll come just like this with no resistor on it. It just depends on the meter. But what it will be is the perfect specs. Most of these meters, although they're still working, um, let's say it's a hundred, you got a hundred UA meter, and I test a lot of them, and it takes 125 UA to go to full scale. Well, that meter is always going to show your your tubes testing low because you got an extra 125 UA on the meter. Or if it's under, not many are under. So most of them are over, so they're going to show low readings. But if it's under, you'll show high readings. I do once in a while find a really nice Hickok meter that's right exactly perfect, and I always try to use them. I got a pile of old Hickok meters. A lot of people have made these alterations. I've done it for them. They sent me their tester, and I just installed a new meter. I only charge $75 to make that cut and put the new meter in. It also includes all do a quick check of your tube tester to check the calibration and I'll calibrate it if it doesn't need any parts for the price. If it needs parts that's extra and if it needs other troubleshooting I'd have to charge it for that too but most of them don't. Most of them just needs a slight adjustment maybe a new 83 or a new 5Y3 and I'll, I'll look at it and make sure it's still you know it's it's still within spec and so for $75 that's a pretty good deal. The only bad thing is you gotta pay for shipping both ways Anyways, I'm going to try to keep this video short, and there you go. This is what you're going to have to cut out. This had the big meter in it. This meter was in this tube tester. Every tube tester I look at, I always take the meter off, clean them up, and take them apart and clean them inside and out. And so I'll take a meter off every tube tester I work on. And also check it to see if it's within specifications. So that's what you have to cut. It's not much, and I do with a Dremel type tool. I use two different kinds of blades. I use the real small blades that can be real precise in cutting this round hole. And I have the bigger blades, these lock ones, that's not quite as precise. It'll leave a little bit of rough edges, but it sands right off. And the, the, so the hole, the edges will be very smooth. What else? What else? Hmm. Anyways, I needed. I get a lot of questions about, you know, what does it take to put one of these meters in my tube tester? So that's what I'm trying to explain here, and here's why. See the difference in the where they put the movement. It's about a quarter inch difference. And I always tell people when you end up, it's going to look like a crescent moon. The piece you need to take off, and there it is. Very simple alteration. Um, if if you do get a new meter, I'll give you a new capacitor with that meter, and I'll give you uh, the lugs to hook your wires up to the lugs because the meters I sell, most of them anyways, do not have these old style where you just solder right onto the lugs that are already on the tube tester. Um, a lot of times I can take these, these old style Hickok meters and I'll take these lugs off and I'll put, uh, turn them around and I put the studs facing out so you can use lugs and bolt right to the tube tester so you don't have to solder every time you want to take these wires off. So there you go. Quick video to show you what it takes to put a beautiful, nice, new, way improved, far superior meter on your tube tester that's going to be right to specs. It'll make an old tube tester that's not working correctly if it's the meter work like new again. You'd be very surprised. It's way better than those digital meters where you have to do calculations. Well, do this, do that. Um, and it, it, keeps the, it keeps the look of the tube tester the same. And I posted a bunch of different meters that I've made over the years on, on the website. Um, a couple of them anyways. I made hundreds of these. And they always come out looking really, really nice. So I hope that answers your questions. That's what you need to cut. 
And in, in some cases, in the newer models, like a 752A, um, they, put, they make the hole bigger. Uh, they use the old style hole and they use a new style meter. So in, in very few cases, you can just drop a new meter right in there. You can tell by looking underneath your tube tester. If you see a big space around the movement of the meter on the, on the back of the meter, if you see a big open space up here, you can probably drop a meter right in there. Now I have a 539C and it's a newer style meter from Hickok. It's a four and a half inch by four meter, like this. But of course, they put the movement lower in the case. So as, as Hickok evolved and started their newer model meters, they just went with four and a half inch by four meters. And that's really all these meters are. There are four and a half inch by four meter in a bigger case. The studs are exactly the same, the lineup exactly the same as, as these ones here on the top. So I hope that answers your questions. I hope I'm not babbling. I'm just trying to remember everything. So I hope I don't want to miss anything. And there you go.